let me start this off with a single statement. Complexity is simplicity in plural form. Now what does that actually mean? In our world of atoms and cells and things that individually are relatively simple, how is that statement interpreted? That statement and the idea behind it is actually one of the defining laws of our universe. It can be said many ways. Take, for example, Aristotle, who once said that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This idea is echoed throughout much of history, and indeed, it makes sense, doesn't it? You put a bunch of simple things together, and they will create something complex. Or perhaps you could say that anything complex can be broken down into its simpler constituent parts. This idea is the idea of emergence. So what is emergence? The most classic example of emergence is that of an anthill. Imagine, if you will, that you are an ant. Now primarily this means you are probably not as smart as a human. In fact, it means you are pretty dumb. No offense. But if you and everybody else in this room were to form an anthill together, you could create structures of great complexity underground, plan operations, collect food, protect yourselves from invaders. Some ant species are even known for growing fungi, like crops, and herding aphids the same way humans do. There are examples of things like anthills all across the universe that act as emergent entities separate from their independent pieces. A cell is a cell, and a human is a human. And these things are perceived as different, even though one of them is made out of the other. So in these cases, Aristotle's statement holds true. The whole, the human, is greater than the sum of its parts. But emergence takes another step forward and attempts to resolve our universal hierarchical structures of increasing complexity as relating directly to its own laws of nature. It describes small or simple things coming together to form large or complex things with different properties and exponentially greater complexity than that of the sum of their parts. To allow me to explain this, I would like to introduce you to Metcalfe's Law. Metcalfe's Law is a law created by Robert Metcalfe, a famous computer scientist and entrepreneur who helped create the internet. His theory describes the way that the number of connections between points increases exponentially as the number of points increases. So two points would form one connection, five points would form 10 connections, and 12 points would form 66 total connections. It is honestly astounding how quickly the number of connections between points explodes to infinity. By the time you get to 100 points, there's 4,950 possible connections. The formula for Metcalfe's law is n times n minus 1 all divided by 2, which means that the number of connections is asymptotically directly proportional to n squared over 2. So what does that have to do with emergence? Well, if we assume that these points are the parts that form the emergent entity, then an increased or decreased complexity can be read in the number of interactions between points. In such a case, we assume that the whole is not defined by the sum of its parts, but by the sum of their interactions. To help me explain that, I'd like to introduce you to an example, voids. Voids, that's B-O-I-D-S, are the subject of a research paper written by Craig Reynolds in 1986 in which he outlines his process of creating a group of bots that fly like a real flock of birds. In his paper, he explains that there are only three rules that voids must follow. One, avoid collisions with other voids. Two, turn to move in the same direction as boys near you, and three, always attempt to move towards the center of any group of boys close to you. These rules are simple, but with their implementation, a computer can actually calculate in three dimensions the movements of flocks of birds and schools of fish, an infinitely complex motion that is still not fully understood to this day. 
These rules, when applied to individual points, are less than useless. But as the number of points increases, so do the number of interactions between voids. And as such, the center of the flock becomes an increasingly precise position. The average motion of voids near the central void gets closer and closer to the direct motion of the flock. And the emergent complexity of the entity itself, the flock, increases. And that looks like this. It's important to remember that there are only three rules operating on any of the voids present on screen. So now, the important question. What on earth does emergence and anything to do with Boyd's or Metcalfe's law have to do with humans? Well, emergence is prevalent and very important to us humans and our societies because it causes or is caused by three things. That's shared language, shared opinion, and shared progress. So let's start with number one. How does sharing a language have to do with emergence? For the purpose of this talk, I'll say that it's important to emergence, shared language that is, because our languages are the modes with which we can transfer information. Think back to the Metcalfe's law example. In his theory, telephones are connected by wires and capable of calling each other. So in this case, what are the wires? Well, you, you already know because I've just been talking about it. It's language. Our shared languages are the way we communicate, or more importantly, the way we transfer information that, as a purpose, breeds survival. One person who learns that willow bark can help relieve pain and cure headaches can transfer that information to other people. And soon enough, people are popping aspirins two to three times a day. And headaches are an easily resolvable issue. Our ability to transfer information between ourselves has led to an increasing general knowledge to our population, which looks a bit like this. It's important to remember that this is also an exponential process, as when you receive a piece of information, you are statistically quite likely, if this information is important, to pass it on to maybe two or three, or in the case of teachers, you pass on thousands of pieces of information to thousands of children during the course of your lifetime. In an interconnected system like our society, information spreads like wildfire. And obviously, with Metcalfe's law included, as the number of points increases, the number of connections increases exponentially, and as such, the efficiency of the system and its ability to transfer information also increases. But maybe more importantly to our social lives now, rather than thousands of years ago, is emergence's effect on our shared opinions. Have you ever been on Reddit? Or on Twitter, when people are, specifically when people are talking about the latest scandal? Things that ordinarily can seem small or insignificant can get blown way out of proportion. And slight misunderstandings can lead to the vilification of companies or even countries. This is, in a general sense, caused by herd mentality. Herd mentality is defined as the tendency for a person's behavior or beliefs to conform to the, those of the group to which they belong. This comes from a good place. Thousands of years ago, when humans were still hunter-gatherers, when everybody was eating a berry, we could assume that said berry was safe to eat. And when everybody was assuming or avoiding a plant, we were smart to do the same. Even if we didn't know why they were doing what they did, we could follow along. And in general, it worked out. Effectively, it's a good survival strategy to do what other people do, no questions asked. Now, these days, some people think herd mentality has less of a place in our society. But I'm not here to talk about whether it's a good thing or not. Instead, I'm here to express to you why you should think that this is incredibly important to emergence and human society in general. Because herd mentality breeds emergent properties. When two people come together to agree to work towards a common goal, they will, in most cases, achieve this goal 
faster than if they had worked independently. Obviously. But as the number of parts that form the emergent entity increases, so do the capabilities of the emergent entity increase exponentially. And as such, so do its capabilities. What I mean by that is that, by that token, it would take less than half the time for two people to accomplish the same task as each of them working independently. Less than half being the operating work. Now maybe you think I've delved a little bit too far into human behavior, and this has less and less to do with actual examples of emergence in our universe. But emergence as a topic is a collection of seemingly redundant, obvious statements that come together to form a system where a bunch of stupid things make one smart thing. So the takeaway is this. Everything I've been saying about herd mentality, all of that, those are actually examples of emergence in our universe. Because the human race is an emergent entity. You, me, everyone else, we form a massive plot of connections that create an interconnected web of knowledge and a shared sense of progress. Point three. This idea is the idea of the human collective. A single human is not as smart or physically capable as our caveman ancestors. In fact, most cavemen knew incredible amounts about the world around them, about vegetation, animals, and survival. They had to be incredibly intelligent. They had to have general intellects comparatively much greater than ours simply to survive. But the cavemen didn't step on the moon, did they? No, that was us. That and many other things. Harnessing electricity. Check. Creating artificial intelligence. Check. Creating the internet. Splitting the atom. How did we do all that? Simple. We are the human collective. Our total capabilities far exceed that of the sum of our parts. Everybody brings something to the table. There is a history of the recognition of this fact among our greatest minds. Think of Newton, who in 1675 wrote a letter to Robert Hooke, in which he said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the backs of giants. But Newton himself was mistaken. There are no giants. Some of us may be taller than others, but in the end, the giants upon which Newton and Einstein, the brightest and most brilliant minds of humanity, stood upon have and always will be the 105 billion humans who came before us. It is a great tower of ascending knowledge, and our interactions build this collective. A true giant, the greatest human mind to ever exist. Its neurons are our relationships our data transfers. The internet is its personal laptop. It exists as an emergent being, as an emergent entity, separate from our lives. There are a few things that I could say that could drive this point home further. Google search egoistic altruism. See what comes up. Think back to the ants, to the anthill, and realize that we are exactly like them. Individually, we are so, so unintelligent. And despite this, we dominate this earth. I'm not kidding. Google search egoistic altruism the moment you can. It's quite important. There is no greater argument that I can think of for peace, for love, and for kindness. There is no greater argument. This understanding that we are the boys themselves, that we form the connections between points, is the ultimate arbiter of our tolerance. What more effective or elegant fashion is there that I could say this? We are, as a whole, as a species, better together, better in harmony. Think of this the next time you feel alone or worthless. The next time nihilism overcomes you, if it does. Humans have an innate need, an innate drive 
to feel like we are part of something greater than us, something everlasting. And maybe, just maybe, we are. A human is a human, and humanity is humanity. And these things are perceived as different, despite the fact that one of them is made of the other. Think of society. We see ourselves as separate, disconnected, us against the world. But there is only one human being alive, and it has 7.5 billion cells. Thank you.